Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving y'all a book haul. I normally don't do book hauls because I am a college student trying to pay for tuition obviously so um, <laughs> I don't buy a lot of books. Um, whenever I do buy a book I buy one here or there or in this case there was something to celebrate. In celebratory situations I will splurge on myself a little bit in a reasonable way at like a half price books or a thrift store. And then some of these were also sent to me very kindly by an author. So let's get right on into these books which the majority are historicals so most of them are historical romances which i'm excited about first i do want to mention these four books these are all of the books in the element series by britney c cherry she very 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 kindly sent me all four of her new covers all four of the new covers to me as a gift <laughs> i love britney c cherry so much um her book the silent waters I adore it so much. One of the most epic romances I've ever read about ever. And Brittany C. Cherry saw my TikTok about this book specifically, sent me these books as a thank you. So I'm like in awe. I am very grateful. They're all signed and personalized by her, which is what? <laughs> so first, the first book in the series is The Air He Breathes. And she signed this one for me. <gasps> okay, and then the second one is the Fire Between High and Low, and she also signed that one for me. Well, she signed all of them for me, but I have to show you, okay? The Silent Waters, obviously my baby. I love this one. She signed this one. And then the last one, of course, a fan favorite, The Gravity of Us. Oop, wrong page. There, she signed it too. So um, these will be my treasures for forever. <laughs> I will treasure these till the day I die. And I'm just honestly so grateful. So if you're watching this, Brady C. Cherry, I love you. Um, <laughs> I am so grateful and so wonderfully blessed that you did this. You did not have to do this at all, but they will now be my babies till the end of time. <laughs> if you didn't know about this series, look it up. These are all contemporary romance series. They don't connect literally at all. Some of the best romances I have ever read are in this series. So get to it. Get to read a note, please. <laughs> I went to go visit my parents a couple uh, weekends ago and I took these two book trips that I have my books from from visiting them. I went to their small little hometown in Texas and then we and then I went I went to a Goodwill there and that's where I got three of these things and then we traveled to Houston for my best friend's birthday and as a treat to her we went to Half Price Books and we walked around we hung out I bought her a book um it was A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher by the way and she binge the entire series afterward so i am very proud of her and so glad that she loves that series as much as i do anyway long story short i'm gonna talk about the things that i ended up getting at goodwill which equaled less than three dollars <laughs> the book that i got is elisa claypas was at goodwill you know um it's someone to watch over me which i have never heard about this book um, I don't know what series it is in. I haven't even looked it up. She couldn't remember who she was. A temptingly beautiful woman awakens in a stranger's bed, rescued from the icy waters of the Thames, her memory gone. Told that she is Vivian Rose Duvall, one of London's most scandalous beauties, she finds herself under the protection of enigmatic, charming Graham Morgan. Her life is in his hands, but deep in her heart, she knows he has mistaken her for someone else. He was the only man she could trust. As one of London's most eligible and unattainable catches, Grant Morgan is a man who has known every kind of woman, and the one in his arms now seems so innocent, so vulnerable, that he can't help but be enchanted. And as his love for this mysterious beauty grows, he is determined to unravel the secrets of her past. I got this for a 99 cents, Elisa Kleypas that I did not own. And Lisa Kleypas is one of my favorite historical romance authors of all time. So I picked this one up. Anyway, I'm going to go look up later what series this is in, but a 99 cent Lisa Kleypas is a total steal for sure. If you didn't know, I collect VHS tapes because we have a VHS player at my parents' house and I love collecting them. And Goodwill is a great, amazing place to look for VHS tapes under $1. This was 99 cents. And if you didn't know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite TV show of all time. So I got the VHS uh, season for my favorite season of Buffy, which is season two, which is the superior all time season. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is on Amazon Prime. If you want to check it out, if you've never seen it, go do it. This is your this is your push to go do it. Buffy is my favorite TV show of all time and it will become yours. Okay, so my last 
section of books are all books that I found at half price books. Yeah, I went there to celebrate my best friend's birthday, so. The first thing that I want to mention is not a book. I found another VHS tape and it was only like a dollar two. Um, and it is a movie of Pride and Prejudice in VHS form. Are you kidding me? Um, so this was made in um, 1940. 1940. So I'm, I love this. Look at this. I love anything Pride and Prejudice and like I believe the movie's in black and white because that's what the back looks like and it was made in 1940 so but like isn't that awesome I want to watch this I've never heard about this version or seen this version and I watched a lot of versions of Pride and Prejudice so I might be checking this one out very soon going to my parents house and taking this one with me to go watch it but isn't that so cool about a this was one dollar for this vintage version of Pride and Prejudice y'all okay don't worry all the rest are books I know you're here for the books um I have this stack for you so <laughs> let's let's just i'll just pick one out okay so i ended up finding an elizabeth hoyt book uh, this is one of the books in the maiden lane series i don't know which one unfortunately it doesn't tell me which number it is um but when you open it up you have a very pretty step back i think it might be one of the later ones in the series if i'm not mistaken because it has like the pictures of all the other ones already on the book um, so I don't know which one. It came out in 2017, so take with that what you will, but I'm not gonna read the back for this because I don't want to be spoiled for the Maiden Lane series. I've read two books in the series, but I haven't read them in order, so I'm gonna start from book one very soon, but I don't know which one this is, but I am collecting it because I do love what I've read so far in this series, you know? Then I ended up finding uh, Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. Um, I honestly know nothing about this book, but I know that people love it, and I know it's a big staple in the historical romance community, so let me read the back for the first time ever. Sebastian Ballister, the notorious Marquess of Dane, is big, bad, and dangerous to know. No respectable woman would have anything to do with the bane and blight of the Ballisters, and he wants nothing to do with respectable women. He's determined to continue doing what he does best, sin and sin again, and all that's going swimmingly, thank you until the day a shop door opens and she walks in. Jessica Trent is a determined young woman and she's going to drag her imbecile brother off the road to ruin, no matter what it takes. If saving him and with him her family and fortune means taking on the devil himself, she won't back down. The trouble is the devil in question is so shockingly irresistible and the person who needs the most saving is herself. Look at that, we have a hero, a reluctant hero, and I think it might be a marriage of convenience situation, possibly, I don't know. I know that people have read this book and I've talked about it in many videos, I just have a horrible memory. Um, so this does sound very interesting and I'm wondering to see if I love this book as much as everyone else does. Then I found another Lisa Kleypas. We have Devil in Disguise. This is the last book currently out in the Ravenel series. So I have a completed collection of the Ravenels. I've read all the books except this one. And I'm finally ready to dive into this one because I have read the Wallflower series and I have read the Ravenel series by Lisa Kleypas and you have to read apparently both of those before you get into this one because they interconnect. I've never read the back of this because I've never been ready to read the back because I hadn't read the ser both series yet, but I have. So let's read the back. Lady Merritt Sterling, a strong-willed beauty who runs a shipping company, knows London society is dying to catch her in a scandal. So far, she's been too smart to provide them with one. But then she meets Keir McRae, a rough and rugged Scottish whiskey distiller, and all her sensible plans vanish like smoke. They couldn't be more different, but their attraction is powerful, raw, and irresistible. From the moment Keir McRae arrives in London, he has two goals. One, don't fall in love with the dazzling Lady Merritt Sterling. Two, avoid being killed. So far, neither of those things are going well. Kier doesn't know why someone wants him dead until fate reveals the secret of his mysterious past. His world is thrown into upheaval and the only one he trusts is Merit. Their passion blazes with an intensity Merit has never known before, making her long for the one thing she can't have from Kara McRae forever. As danger draws closer, she'll do whatever it takes to save the man she loves, even knowing he might be the devil in disguise. That sounds good. I know that some of my lovely friends, Crystal and Jen, absolutely adore this book and will not stop raving about it. And I need to get on board with this. Like I need to know why they love it so much. I need to. And since I've completed both series recently, I feel like I'm ready for this one. Okay, I found a Johanna Lindsay. I ended up finding multiple Johanna Lindsay's, but I limited myself to one because, okay, I'm not gonna actually read these books probably. They're just probably for collection because I have read a few Johanna Lindsay's that I just didn't really care for all that much. But you know what? 
her step backs are freaking golden and I found the cream of the crop with this book. This is Man of My Dreams by Johanna Lindsay. This step back is something else. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. So between the two Johanna Lindsay's that I was tossing between getting, I of course got the one with the man with no pants. Yeah, I'll read the back just for fun because maybe I might find it interesting. The most desirable beauty in the land, widely unpredictable Megan Penworthy has set her amorous sights on Ambrose St. James, Duke of Worth Worthston? Man, some of these names are hard to pronounce. Um, a man she has never met but has every intention of marrying. No other suitor will satisfy her, especially not the common, if uncommonly handsome, horse breeder Devlin Jeffries. Does she fall in love with this man? Let's see. Posing as lowborn Jeffries to escape potentially fatal confrontation, Ambrose is enthralled and infuriated by the brazen duke hunting redhead. Okay, so Ambrose is actually also the horse breeder. Okay. Um, without revealing his true identity, the notorious rogue vows to foil Megan's plans to wed the man of her dreams, never imagining the enchanted schemer would turn out to be the only woman he could ever dream of marrying. That actually sounds kind of interesting. If you've read this book, let me know, because I know Johanna Lindsay is hit or miss for a lot of people, and she has a lot of non-consensual stuff going on in her books. So if you've read this book, let me know and let me know if it is worth it or not, because that does sound very interesting. But I feel like there's a lot of lying in this book by what I read off the summary, and that doesn't really float my boat, but I mainly got it because of this sir here, so. <laughs> oh, I found a beautiful book. I found Dark Warrior by Donna Fletcher. I have read the entire Sinclair Brothers series by Donna Fletcher and adored that series. And I'm about to read Bound to Warrior. And I found this one, sorry for the ring light glare, but look at how stunning this book is. It's raised lettering, the dress is beautiful, the artwork is beautiful, the background is so pretty with the flowers. Like, are you joking? I don't know if this is a part of a series and I don't really care because I found this old version of a Donna Fletcher book and I was sold immediately the moment that I saw it. This book, the back, it says, he is her salvation, her lover, her destiny. Mary waits, trembling in the darkness, the prisoner of a fearsome tormentor who would have her at any cost. Then a mysterious cloaked figure appears at her dungeon door. A champion has come to free the beautiful lass and carry her off to safety with arms as powerful and sure as the trees in the forest. <laughs> okay, that already sounds so good, I'm halfway done. He calls himself Michael, the dark one. Though he must keep his face hidden from her, Mary is captivated by his strength and kindness and irresistibly drawn by his masculine fire towards a most willing and sensuous surrender. But the warrior who once held her captive will stop at nothing to reclaim his prize. And if Mary does not return to him, many innocents will die. Yet how will she survive if she is forced to abandon the most passionate love she has ever known? I want to read this right now. <laughs> I need to read more Donna Fletcher because I adored her Sinclair Brothers series. But like this... I can get on board with this most definitely hopefully this isn't like book number three or two in a series if it is i might not care which is very rare for me because this sounds so good and i want to read it right now and the last book that i have to haul for you i mainly hauled because of the cover but it does sound really fun okay this is called uh sweet starfire by j ann krentz and like look at this cover isn't that gorgeous like that is so cool. And the lettering is raised too. The back says, the summary says, she was Sidra, an ethereal, fiery haired beauty raised amid the serenity and shelter of a spiritual race, but belonging to another people, the so-called wolves. He was Teague Severance, a ruggedly handsome adventurer, a wolf used to taking and getting the woman he wanted. Side by side on a dangerous quest, they soar from shivering towers of Sidra's home city to the rough and rowdy mining towns of the galaxy's outback to the lush deadly jungles of the planet renaissance it was their fate to battle both human and alien and alien danger and each other for severance would awaken sidra's untamed and passionate wolf heritage and the stirrings of a dark hot desire she had never known before this is a sci-fi romance that's another reason why i picked this up i read the back and i was like sold 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 hopefully this is really good i don't know what year this was published 1986 1986 so but look at that cover. I'm enthralled. I'm enthralled. <laughs> Anyways, 
there you have it. That's a, that's a very like small book haul for me, but I thought I'd get this book haul, book haul out to you before I get a bunch of books for Christmas possibly, or I gift myself books for Christmas possibly, who knows. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. If you have made it this far in the video, leave me a star, any kind of star emoji because we just talked about this book, Sweet Starfire. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.